John, I believe a lot of things. Everything I believe, I think, is true. But if I stop to think about it, what do I mean by belief? What, what is the nature of belief? Yeah. Well, I think, as you know, the mind is a biological phenomenon, so belief is part of the biology of the mind. And you won't understand belief unless you see it in relation to other parts of the biology of the mind. Now, I have to introduce an ugly word here, intentionality, and that sounds like it's a fancy thing. It just means the capacity by which the mind represents objects and states of affairs. So beliefs and hopes and fears and desires and love and hate and lust and discussion, those are all intentional. Uh, now, that suggests they got something to do with intending, but that's just an accident of history. We got this word from the Germans, <laughs> and, and like most of our confused words in philosophy. Uh, and in German, intentionality doesn't sound like Absicht. That's the word for intention. So forget about the connection with intending and just think there is this capacity that the mind has to represent. And it does that in a variety of ways. And belief is one of the most important. Uh, belief and desire are kind of matching concepts here because with belief we represent how things are or how we think they are and that has the mind to world direction of fit the mind is supposed to fit the world but with desires we represent not how we think things are but how we want them to be and that the desire has the world to mind direction of fit the world is supposed to change to match the mind yeah. now how then does all of this work uh, as a totality, all of these uh, intentional states? Well, I can't answer that question briefly. It's too big a question, mm -hmm. but I can tell you some features. Beliefs are characteristically uh, justified. Beliefs require justification in a way that desires and hunches don't. And beliefs are uh, characteristically justified by their position within a network of other beliefs and other intentional states, and above all, a network that contains perception. So you see uh, that the dog is in the living room, mm. and that is kind of a boring belief, but you come to the belief mm. the dog is in the mm. living room. Mm. So you have beliefs that are both related to your perceptions, uh, and also many of your beliefs are derived uh, related to other uh, beliefs. Uh, I believe that Barack Obama is uh, uh, active in the government because I also believe he's president of the United States. But now the remarkable thing is that with beliefs, there's a peculiar rational constraint in that the belief is not only caused by perception, which is often the case, but the belief is itself subject to rational assessment, depending on not just what you've seen, but what you've read and what you know otherwise and what seems reasonable and what evidence you have. So now I have to introduce another piece of jargon. The belief only exists in a big network of other beliefs and other mental states. And one part of the network, such as my belief we're in the United States, that only makes sense in relation to the whole network. I have to believe the United States is a country that uh, it, it, it's on the surface of the earth and so on. So belief is not, belief looks like it's pretty simple on the surface. I got this belief. I believe I'm an American. But in fact, it's part of a vast network of intentionality. And you can really only understand it by seeing how the network works and how it's constrained by rationality and by perception. Are there different categories of belief such that the, the belief that you saw your dog in your living yeah. room or the belief that you do not believe in God? Yeah. Those are two things I'd use the word belief. Yeah. But one is kind of a direct perception and the other is uh, kind of an analysis of reality. Yeah. But, but I, they're both beliefs. Yeah, I think that you're right to say that we have to make a categorization of our beliefs into, so, so, so to speak, different degrees of centrality. But in fact, there's some of my beliefs I think it is misleading to describe as beliefs. Mm. I think they are presuppositions that enable me to cope with the world. Do I believe that there is a real world out there independently yeah. of my representation? Right. See, I'm going to get on an airplane. Now, when I call up the airline, I, I, or when I get on the computer to find out, is the plane on time? I don't then have to ask, oh, and by the way, does reality exist? <laughs> I, 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 that's not something I can find out by even looking on the net, uh, because all of these activities presuppose the existence of reality. So there are some beliefs I, that are so fundamental that it's probably not a good idea to construe them as beliefs. And I mentioned earlier that network, these are part of something in addition mm -hmm. to the network. These are what I call the background. The whole system works against a background mm. of what we take for granted. 
we take for granted that entities are related to each other by cause and effect relations. Mm -hmm. So we want to know uh, what's the cause of cancer. And it won't do to say, well, cancer is just one of those things. It doesn't have any causes. We won't accept that because our background presupposition is things need a causal explanation. And the background presupposition that makes sense of true belief is the idea that there's a way that things are that's independent of how we represent mm. how they are. Mm. Now, sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes our beliefs are so inchoate, they're so ill-formed, we don't really know. But for beliefs that really matter to us, uh, we assume that there is a reality that corresponds to the belief. But that b belief in that reality is not just another belief. It's a presupposition of making sense of the first belief. Some people say that when they believe in God, that that is the, the most sure thing that they know. Yeah. Many people tell well, me Well, I know, I think a lot of people, for them, uh, the belief in God is a kind of background presupposition. Right. They right. make sense of their lives only on the presupposition that there is a divine force. Uh, and there was a period in my life, a rather long time ago, when I accepted something like that when I was a small child. Uh, but it, uh, later on it came to see me, there's no rational ground for that, whatever. Uh, it's sad uh, that there's no rational ground for it. And a lot of people think, well, who the hell needs a rational ground? I have it on faith. Well, okay, but faith is not a reason. Uh, faith is not a ground uh, for accepting something. So I, I think you're absolutely right that there are a lot of people for whom a certain metaphysical vision, the existence of God or the existence of spirituality or the existence of a certain uh, a spiritual nature of the universe, that all of those are background presuppositions mm -hmm. of their whole being, mm -hmm. their whole mode of life. But I, I don't share any of that. I think it's all for the. I think it's almost all hot air uh, that they don't have any ground uh, f uh, for these. And many of them would admit they don't have any ground. But for me, that's a reason for not accepting it. Whereas I can, I, my acceptance that there is a world that exists independently of me, that seems to me not at all like the belief in God. It's not specific uh, to this or that view. It just says. If when you investigate how things are, there's a way that they are that enables you to investigate. But to understand the nature of belief, your feeling of the reality of the external world and the person who really believes in God uh, as a fundamental uh, basic belief, uh, in terms of just understanding belief, not understanding reality, yeah. is kind of the same thing. Yeah, no, I don't think it is, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> the belief in God presupposes the belief in an external reality. Because if external reality should turn out that there is a God, that's a feature of external reality. If it should turn out that external reality is such that there is no God, that's a feature of external right. reality. Right. So they're not on all fours <laughs> with each other. I know a lot of people often say that to me. Well, your acceptance of the real world is just like my acceptance of God. No, they're totally different.